Hey guys, welcome back to a new YouTube exclusive. This one I am really excited about because instead of a, a wall clip manipulation, we're actually going to be doing a wall jump manipulation. Now, they're kind of similar, some of the setup's a little similar, but you're going to be really interested to see how I was able to control my subpixels this time because, as you know, with the other manipulations, it's all about controlling your subpixels, kind of gambling your movement a little bit, and seeing if you can get those clips. I have shown this manipulation to a few people in the SMB3 community, had them run their own tests, and our success rate so far, I swear, has got to be like 99.9% .9 chance. Once I show you guys how this works and then how it doesn't work, you're going to see that the odds of me getting the wall jump, just even using this, even making a mistake sometimes in this manipulation can cause me to still get the wall jump. So I'm, a, I'm very excited to share this with you guys. I'm very excited uh, for you guys to learn and understand exactly what I'm doing because I'm already using this in runs. I just cannot believe that something like this works. So I'm ready to share it with you guys if you guys are ready to embark on this uh, journey with me and learn something new today. All right, let's jump right in. For those of you who don't know, the wall jump in the Warpless run is done in World 6 Level 9. Yes, World 6 Level 9. Best level in history. Best level number. Come on, guys, you know it. Anyways, we're going to be setting up the manipulation in World 6, obviously, because the wall jump is in 6-9. But you would think, okay, well, you just set up the manipulation in the level before or at the beginning of 6-9. No, you actually start the manipulation in the Fortress, 6 four, two. The way we set up the manipulation here is, and before we get in too deep, my coin count right here, you can see is oscillating values of my subpixel. It's a visual representation of my subpixel values. So the way I have this set up is that I, have no hands, look, no hands. I've already had, have it set up to show you guys and like teach you what's going on. I've pre-made save states. I got it all organized. I got it ready for you guys. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to save state, okay? The main objective here is to enter 6-9 with a subpixel value of anywhere from 0 to 5. That doesn't guarantee that I'm going to get the wall jump. What that means is that if I jump in the right place in the wall, the wall is going to give me that 1 to 2 pixel window, that 1 to 2 frame window that will allow me to put in my jump input and then jump off the wall. The wall jump is the exact same thing explained in Summoning Salt's videos and Cosmic's videos with wall jumps in SMB1. The wall jumps in Mario 3 work the exact same way. You have to be on a correct subpixel value and with that correct subpixel value, you have to jump into the wall at the right pixel and if you hit that right pixel, the wall will allow you to stand for one or two frames depending on what kind of subpixel value you have. And as long as you execute the input, you are good to go. If I need to set up subpixel value from zero to five, but I'm doing the fortress and I still have another level after the fortress, what does that tell you? Because if we go forward a little bit, you can see I still have to do six, eight before I do six, nine. Now, wouldn't that change my subpixel values? Normally it would, but this is what makes this whole thing interesting. With a lot of research done, I've determined what subpixel values I need when I enter six, eight, and a very specific way to do 6-8 that will allow everything to work out. I'm going to go ahead and say right away, entering 6-8 with a star allows me to do the entire level without a turn back. From previous videos, we already know if I do a whole level from start to finish the exact same way and I never change a single thing, technically, whatever subpixel value I start in that level will give me the same result every single time. So if I start the level with a subpixel value, say here is a 13, I should get the, the same results, right? And the reason we couldn't do this before is because we never use the star here. The star is the ticket. Without the star, we couldn't do this because without the star, we have to grab that grab block right there. Right at the beginning, most of you know, if you've seen it before, you grab the grab block, you jump up and you throw it and you kill the enemy's build P speed. But now we don't have to do this. We already have step one figured out. Set up subpixel value and the boom boom fight, okay? Easy. Based on that subpixel value, we have to do 6-8 a very different way. Using the star here has been an idea just for speed itself in the RTA runs, but it was never really used for anything, and it really doesn't make the level all that much faster. Kind of makes it a little safer, kind of doesn't make it a little safer. Um, so here is the trick and the ticket to making this work. First and foremost, the hills. You have these small little hills and then you have boom that big hill right there every speedrunner knows that you want to run down 
every you want to run down all the hills because they save like little little sub frames or sub pixels honestly i don't even know the tasters tell me i need to do it so i just i just listen but anyways if i run down those big hills they will change my sub pixel values a lot when i was trying to figure out how to do a consistent 6 8 without changing sub pixel values or getting the same value at the end my main goal was like, okay, don't do any turn backs, do the same thing every time and avoid all the big hills. As you can see, that's kind of what I did. So I start, I don't do any turn backs. I build my P speed the same way every time. I avoid the big hill, no hills. I take my damage. Damage doesn't change sub pixel values as you can see. No hills, take damage, sub pixel value, look at the coin count, doesn't change. No hills, no hills, except for that last hill. For some reason, for some reason, this last hill causes you to almost always get a sub pixel value between zero and five. So right here, boom, we'll nail the three. There's so many things going on right now. It's like, Mitch, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, okay? Don't do a single turn back in six, eight. Build the same P speed as normal, which is pretty easy. Um, and don't run down any of the big hills except for the last one. As you can see, my setup, sub pixel value three, boom, wall jump, easy. This is throughout this entire video i didn't miss the wall jump once so i'm going to reload the safe state and be on sub pixel value 13 and i'm going to show you through consistency of doing the exact same thing okay no turn backs build p speed these hills for some reason that that's the weirdest part guys these little hills right here you think mitch you said don't run on hills they change your sub pixel value these little hills don't i have no idea why you this should be impossible because of all these hills but for some reason they're extremely consistent so as you run right still get the same i have the exact same oscillating values as before run down the hill 10 and 2 hit the 2. anything between 0 and 5 i'm good i actually didn't even get the same oscillating values i had 9 and 1 last time this time i had 8 and 0 but as you can see even slight mistakes um, still give me the correct oscillating values the, the, There it is the ticket is somewhere with this hill at the end if I don't run down This little hill right here. Okay, if I don't run down this little hill I will get a high sub pixel value. There's one big unanswered question right now. It's Mitch How do you know what sub pixel value? You can enter 6 8 and do this and get a low sub pixel value how do you know which value does to, to finish here with the four like how do you know i tested every single one from zero to 15 i beat this boom boom on sub pixel value zero all the way to 15 and i tested every single time 15 times probably three times each to guarantee consistency you have to keep trying it right because you're not always going to do the same thing over and over again you're going to get a sub pixel value of one through my testing i learned that every single sub pixel value except four seven and eight out of 15 three out of the 15 are the only three that don't work and that's why this is so incredibly consistent if i go to set up the boom boom fight and i get the sub pixel value of six it'll still work i get a sub pixel value of zero this will still work this method will set me up so as you can see we started with sub pixel value one and we'll go through no turn backs normal p speed build stay on the hills avoid the big hill full big jump take damage because we want a small jump as we want to we want to wall jump as small mario run down the hill boom zero if i didn't run down the hill look if i didn't run down the hill you can see my oscillating values right now are 14 and 6 well those aren't good enough we need zero to five to get the wall jump right Without this hill, I don't think this would be possible. But for some reason, this one hill is incredibly consistent with giving me low sub pixel values. The setup is the exact same as the wall clips in 7-1 or 7-6 with the boom boom fight or the wand grab. We move our sub pixels. Here's what makes it really easy. If you're facing left and you move one pixel, you'll start from 15 and work your way to zero. If you're facing right, you'll start from zero and work your way to 15. If four seven and eight are sub pixel values that don't work then if you face left starting from 15 or starting from whatever value and you move one pixel to roll over 15 your odds of getting from 9 to 15 are really high and even if you overshoot as long as you get from zero to three or even five and six you're still gonna get it i haven't missed a single wall jump every single time 
testing every subpixel is super important. Here's an interesting thing. I decided to stop on a subpixel value that I have tested to not work. So I said four, seven, and eight don't work. Okay, we do a jump. Normal P speed. Right on, that's good. We have an oscillating value of zero and eight. Pretty standard. We don't, we take our normal damage. We run down the hill, 12. That's not gonna work. We need zero to five, right? So I, so that's what I mean. I went through every single subpixel value, starting this level, doing the exact same thing here, testing each each and every one. When I first did this, every single subpixel value didn't work, every single one, until I started running down this hill. And again, as consistency, you can see, starting subpixel value eight always gives me an end value of 12, and we need zero to five. So 12 does not work. So we'll try it again one more time. And that, that's, that's what you need to do when you test these things. You have to keep doing it. You can't just do it once and be like, it works because it doesn't. There you go. And as you can see, a subpixel value of 12, we're going for the wall jump, never works. We're gonna keep trying it. I'll show you guys just so you guys can get a first hand see. For so I was doing it every time before, but now I'm not on a subpixel of zero to five. Now it's not working anymore. Very unfortunate, makes us sad. However, knowing all of this, we can control everything. Just a big recap in case you guys missed any of this. Set up my subpixel value on the boom boom. Face left to try and move one pixel so we can roll over from 15 and get him, be get him between 9 and 15. Enter 6, 8 between the values of 9 and 15. Hopefully some, some of the values work. Do the no turn back with the star. Avoid all the hills. Run down the last hill. Get a subpixel value from 0 to 5. Boom. Consistency. The reason I wanted to do this is because I'm already doing this in runs. So whenever you come by and you watch and, and you have no clue what I'm doing and I keep talking about wall jump manipulations, this is exactly what it is that I'm doing. This is this is what makes it work so perfectly. I love this so much. That's um pretty much pretty much how the how the manipulation works. I, I hope that wasn't too much for me to explain. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the uh, wall clip manipulation. Out of, out of everything that I just said, you still have to execute the wall jump. You still have to press A at the right time in the wall and you still have to utilize those few little pixels and frames that the game gives you. But the biggest challenge for runners was, first of all, just getting that pixel in the wall. If you don't get the pixel in the wall, you didn't even get a chance, no matter how hard you try. The reason I do this manipulation is so that I'm guaranteed the chance because I trust my ability to execute my wall jumps what I don't trust is the game to give me that random chance with a wall jump on that beautiful, perfect run that we have. I hope you guys all enjoyed and especially I hope you guys learned something. The most important part is that you guys need to learn something. So now when you watch my runs, you guys can fully understand uh, what's going on. Thanks a lot for listening and thanks for watching and uh, thanks for everything you guys. I love everything that you guys are doing. So much positivity in the comments. Uh, everyone is just fantastic and I just I'm so overwhelmed with joy that it, you know every video I keep talking But I need to shut the heck up. So I hope you enjoy it. and I'll see you guys next time See ya